4th of July from Atlanta as the Braves host the Reds in Thursday night action. We start in the top of the first inning, the second pitch of the game. Bill Doran belts a solo home run to right field, his third home run of the year. RBI number 17 for Doran, and the Reds led 1-0. Then later in the top of the first inning, Paul O'Neill hits a single to left field, and Deion Sanders throws out Barry Larkin trying to score from second base. We go from good defense to bad. Here, Barry Larkin fields Ron Gann's ground ball to shortstop. He throws the ball over Hal Morris's head at first base. This allows Otis Nixon to score from third, and the score was tied 1-1. One one. But in the top of the second inning, Joe Oliver belts a two-run home run to left field, his third home run of the year. RBI's number 8-9, and nine, and this made the score 3-1 to one Cincinnati. Moving out of the top of the third inning, the Reds score three more runs. Here, Hal Morris lines a double to the right field wall. It scores Paul O'Neill from second base. RBI number 32 for Morris, and the Reds led 4-1. to one. Then later in the top of the third inning, it was Chris Sabo's turn. Here he hits a ball to deep right field. It goes over Otis Nixon's head in right field. It's good for a triple for Sabo, and it scores Hal Morris from second base, and the Reds took a 5-1 to one lead. This triple by Sabo knocked Pete Smith, the starting pitcher for Atlanta, out of the game, and Rick Mailer came in from the bullpen. Mailer's first batter was Herm Winningham, who chopped the ball out to the mound. The ball would skip by Rick Mailer. Herm Winningham was safe at first base, and this scored Chris Sabo from third, and the Reds led 6-1. to one. Then in the top of the fifth inning, it was Joe Oliver once again. Here he grounds a double down the left field line, scoring Paul O'Neill from second base. RBI number 10 for Oliver, and the Reds led 7-1. Then in the top of the sixth inning, a strange play. Hal Morris grounds to Jeff Treadway, who overruns the ball, then gets knee in the face by Paul O'Neill. Barry Larkin scores on the play, and the Reds led 8-1. Moving now to the bottom of the sixth inning, some controversy. Kip Gross, who got the victory in his first Major League start, here strikes out Ron Gant. Gant did not like the call, and he would get ejected from the game by home plate umpire Gary Darling. This game ended after seven innings because of rain, but it was official. The Reds defeat the Braves 10-4. So the New York Mets are trying to finish off a four-game sweep of the Montreal Expos, who have lost ten games in a row. Kevin Elster at the plate in the top of the first inning against starter for Montreal, Brian Barnes. Elster hits one deep into the left field bleachers. That goes for his fourth homer of the year, and it's a one to nothing New York lead on the Soul Blast. And although we are in Canada, there are USA fans and, of course, Met fans in the audience. New York starter Wally Whitehurst, impressive early and in the middle innings here in the fourth, striking out Tim Wallet to end the inning. Whitehurst would go into the seventh before yielding a run. And... Montreal going through tough times. They want Buck Rogers back. That's Dave Dombrowski, the Expos general manager. He's exasperated because of the sign. No, because of this. Eric Bullock on second base, one out. Sixth inning, Marquis Grissom, ground ball to the left side. Bullock shouldn't be going, but he is, and he's out. Expos run themselves out of an inning. Dombrowski says, dumb, dumb. He's dumbfounded. And in the bottom of the seventh inning, speaking of dumb, this is pretty dumb. Runner on third, Wally Whitehurst. Well, he's called for a balk, and Ivan Calderon scores, tying up the game at 1-1. The Mets get the run back in the top half of the eighth inning, thanks to plays like this. Spike Owen throw to Delano DeShields on the Kevin McReynolds ground ball is said to have pulled DeShields off the bag. Kevin Elster is safe at second base as Tom Reynolds argues feverishly with Eric Gregg. Howard Johnson follows with the game-winning run as he doubles down the left field line this enables Kevin Elster to score. New York leads it 2-1 to one through 8. Greg Jeffries gets a pinch hit two-run home run off of Barry Jones in the ninth inning. His sixth homer of the year. First ever career pinch hit home run. New York leads it 4-1. to one. Then Kevin McReynolds in the ninth gets an infield hit and a throwing error by Barry Jones enabling Gary Templeton to score. 5-1 to one New York. That was the final. New York with a four-game sweep as the Expos lose their 11th straight. Tim Burke 3-4. Wally Whitehurst 5-4. Live from Boston as the Red Sox host the Tigers in Thursday night action. We started in the top of the fourth inning. Mickey Tettleton at the plate for Detroit. He belts a two-run home run to right field, his 15th home run of the year. RBI's number 43 and 44 for Tettleton, and the Tigers led 2 to nothing. Tom Bernanski was shaken up on this play running into the wall, but he would remain in the game. Then later in the top of the fourth inning, the Tigers get another run. 
Skeeter Barnes steals third base. Tony Pena throws to third. Wade Boggs can't handle Tony Pena's throw. An error on Pena on the play, and that would allow Skeeter Barnes to score. And the Tigers led 3 to nothing. The winning pitcher in this game was Rusty Meacham. He went five and a third innings, allowing one run on five hits. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning, Meacham strikes out Jack Clark. Moving now to the top of the fifth inning, the Tigers get two more runs. Cecil Fielder at the plate, and he will crush a two-run home run to deep left field, his 20th home run of the year. RBI's number 63 and 64 for Fielder, and the Tigers took a 5 to nothing lead. Moving now to the bottom of the sixth inning, another big man gets a home run, and this time it's for the Red Sox. Mo Vaughn will get his first home run at Fenway Park, his third home run of the year. A solo shot to right field, and this made the score 5-1 to one Detroit. Moving out of the top of the seventh inning, the Tigers get another run, and once again it's with the long ball. Travis Fryman at the plate, and he will belt a solo home run to left field, his ninth home run of the year. R by number 42 for Fryman, and this made the score 6-1. to one. And that would be the final score. The winning pitcher, Rusty Meacham, is 2-0. and oh. Danny Darwin picks up the loss. He's 3-6. and six. The Tigers defeat the Red Sox 6-1. to one. This day in New York City as the Yankees host the Baltimore Orioles in the Bronx. Top of the second, David Segui up for Baltimore, and he would single. This saw the Yankees starter Jeff Johnson as this bouncer goes down the right field line, and it would score Randy Milligan with the game's first run. In the bottom of the second, Baltimore second baseman Billy Ripken with a nice defensive play as he robs Matt Noakes of a base hit with this leaping grab. The game would remain 1-0 in favor of Baltimore until the bottom of the fifth when Mel Hall would take Baltimore starter Roy Smith deep as he takes his off-speed pitch over the fence. For Hall, it's his 12th home run, and the solo blast would tie the game at one apiece. Then in the bottom of the sixth, this young fan would see Steve Sachs put the Yankees ahead as he too hits a home run off Smith. His fifth of the year would give the Yankees a 2-1 lead in the bottom of the sixth. But in the top of the seventh, it would be time for Baltimore to play long ball. Johnny Oates would get a home run from Chris Hoyles as Hoyles hits his fourth of the year. This comes off Johnson. And Hoyle's opposite field home run would tie the score at two apiece. As this fan who catches it throws it back, just like they do at Wrigley Field. Bottom of the eighth now, the score is still two apiece. Todd Froworth now in for the Orioles, and he would surrender this RBI single to Roberto Kelly through the drawn and infield. It would score Pat Kelly, and it's 3-2 to two Yankees. Then in the top of the ninth, Randy Milligan on first base, but Hoyle's grounds into the 6-4-3 double play. As the Yankees win by the final of 3-2, to two, Eric Plunk gets the victory. He's now 1-2. and two. Smith, the loser, is 4-2. and two. Lee Guterman notches his fifth save as the Yankees have now won six straight and nine of their last ten. Philadelphia, the Phillies play host to the St. Louis Cardinals. Bryn Smith has a little fun with the Philly Fanatic before the game. The Fanatic doesn't like it, but he gets his revenge in the bottom of the first. All-star first baseman John Cruck hits this double off the right field wall. This would score Ricky Jordan and make the score 1-0. The Phillies had the lead in the bottom of the first. The Phillies would increase their lead to 3 to nothing in the bottom of the first inning as Dale Murphy would hit a milestone home run, number 390 on his career. That passes Johnny Bench on the all-time list. For Murphy, his 12th of the season, RBI number 39, a two-run home run over the left field wall makes the score 3-0 Philadelphia as John Crook scores on the home run. In the bottom of the third inning, Ricky Jordan would come up and send this Bob Tewksbury pitch off the screen in left field. This scored Charlie Hayes, and the Phillies were up 5 to nothing. As the fans in Philadelphia were celebrating the 4th of July, a couple in the stadium were celebrating a very special day as we say good luck to Chuck and Jody. The Phillies were cruising along on this night with the help of Terry Mulholland, who's seen here striking out Todd Zeal in the top of the sixth inning for his ninth strikeout. That set a career high for Mulholland. Mulholland would go the distance for his first complete game of the season, striking out ten batters. As the Phillies went on to win 7-1, he improves to 7-8. Bob Tewksbury took the loss. He's 6-5.
July from San Francisco as the Giants host the Astros in Thursday night action. We start in the top of the first inning. Ken Caminiti hits a double to left field, scoring Craig Biggio and Steve Finley, and the Astros led 2-0. The winning pitcher in this game, Darryl Kyle, went seven innings, allowing three runs on nine hits, and he struck out a career-high seven batters. Here in the bottom of the first inning, he struck out Will Clark. Then in the top of the third inning, with the Astros leading three to nothing, Ken Caminiti does it again. Here he belts a two-run home run to left field, his seventh home run of the year. Arbe's number 29 and 30 for Caminiti, and the Astros led five to nothing. But then in the bottom of the fifth inning, Caminiti would have a little trouble with this foul pop. Mike Kingery hits a ball in foul territory, and Caminiti can't come up with it. But then in the top of the sixth inning, the Astros get another run. Casey Candell bloops a single to short right field. It scores Gerald Young from third base. RBA number 28 for Candell, and the Astros led 6 to nothing. Then in the bottom of the sixth inning, with the Astros leading 8 to nothing, the Giants finally get on the board. Kevin Mitchell belts a solo home run to left field, his 14th home run of the year. RBA number 31 for Mitchell, and the score was 8 to 1. Then later in the bottom of the sixth inning, Terry Kennedy would also belt a home run, a two-run shot to right field, his third home run of the year. RBA is number 8 and 9 for Kennedy, and the score is 8 to 3. But the Astros would keep scoring runs. Here in the top of the seventh inning, Casey Candell will belt a two-run home run to right field, his third home run of the year. Arby's number 29 and 30 for Candell, and this gave the Astros a 10-3 lead. Then later in the top of the seventh inning, Steve Finley will line a single to right field. It scores Darryl Kyle, RBI number 27 for Finley, and the Astros led 11-3. Things got so bad for the Giants, they brought in Greg Litton to pitch the top of the ninth inning. Here he gives up a walk to Gerald Young with the bases loaded. It scores Jeff Bagwell. It made the score 14-3. The Astros hold on to defeat the Giants 14-6. In Cleveland, the Indians play host to the Milwaukee Brewers. Tom Treblehorn looks on in the bottom of the third inning. Alex Cole will deliver an RBI single off of Jim Hunter into left field. This allows Sandy Alomar to score, and the Cleveland Indians take a one to nothing lead. Still in the bottom of the third, Carlos Bayarga will line one up the middle, scoring Lewis and Cole, RBIs number 32 and 33 for Bayarga, and the Indians have a three to nothing lead. Some great defensive plays First by the Indian second baseman, Mark Lewis. He makes his diving stop on a B.J. Serhoff grounder. And then in the bottom of the seventh inning, it would be the Brewers shortstop Bill Spires on an Albert Bell shot through the hole. He makes a diving play and throw to get Bell. Charles Nagy was on tonight for the Cleveland Indians. Here in the top of the ninth inning, he gets Candy Maldonado for the second out, and he'll finish the job as he gets Greg Vaughn to fly out. The Indians go on to win 3-0. Nagy his third complete game. He's 4-9. Jim Hunter took the loss. He drops to 0-2. Independence Day greetings from north of the border in Toronto. It's the Twins and the Blue Jays. Runners at the corner. Nobody out top of the second with Junior Ortiz at the ground ball. The third. The Jays get one, but Ortiz beats the throw to first base. Pedro Munoz scored in this 1-0 Minnesota. That would be all the scoring in the game as David West shut down the Blue Jays. He's making his first appearance of the season due to injuries and catches Devon White looking at a call third strike to end the third. He had five strikeouts in the game. Jack Morris gets a little crazy in the dugout with Chuck Knobloch. Top of the sixth inning, Devon White will race after Kirby Puckett's fly ball to left center field and he'll make a nice running catch on the warning track for the out top of the seventh inning now. Jimmy Key had a strong game for the Blue Jays. He went seven and a third innings, allowing only seven hits. And here's one of his three strikeouts, getting Greg Gagne to end the seventh. Bottom of the seventh now. Man on third base at two outs for the Blue Jays. When West used his glove on this play, fielding Pat Borders' comebacker. He throws him out at first. West allowed two hits in his seven innings. Steve Pedrosian worked a scoreless eighth. And Rick Aguilera did the same in the ninth, getting Rob Ducey to fly out to end the game. The Twins win one to nothing, ending the Blue Jays' five-game winning streak. 
David West is 1-0. Jimmy Key drops to 10-4. Rick Aguilera had his 21st save. Day 1991 from Wrigley Field in Chicago as the fireworks would start early in Chicago as 17 runs would be scored in this ball game. Pick up action here in the top of the first inning. Orlando Merced with a fly ball down the left field line. George Bell with a nice running catch by the wall as he gets the first out of the game. Then the bottom of the first inning, Andre Dawson will come up and he will smack a home run to left center field. A two-run shot as Sean Dunstan also scores. Home run number 13 for Dawson. And the Cubs are on top by a score of 2 to nothing. That lead will be cut in half because in the top of the second inning, Barry Bonds will And Bonds will a run. This one opposite way. One to the seats in left field. Home run number 11 for Bonds. And the Cubs lead is cut at 1. Moving now to the bottom of the third inning with the game tied at two apiece. George Bell will come up, and he will hit a double to the gap in left center field. Andre Dawson will circle the bases, and he will collide with Don Slot. Slot will hang on to the ball as Andre Dawson is called out at home plate. Jay Bell with the perfect reel for out number two. Then the bottom of the fifth inning, Mark Grace will come up, and he will smack a two-run home run. This one going to right field. Home run number five, RBIs number 34 and 35 as Jerome Walton also scores. And the Cubs take a 4-2 lead. Then in the bottom of the seventh inning with the Cubs up 6-2, George Bell will come up with a two-run shot. This one going out to left field. Andre Dawson will also score. And the Cubs increase their lead to six as they lead it now by a score of two. But the Cubs not give up in the now eating eight to three, and the base is full of Pirates. Orlando Merced smacks a grand slam home run. Home run number six for Merced as Varsho, Wilkerson, and McClendon all score. And the Cubs lead is trimmed to eight to seven. Then the top of the ninth inning, Barry Bonds will come up, and Bonds will hit a double to left field. This is coming off Paul Ossenmacher. Bobby Bonilla will score, and the game is knotted up at eight apiece as these two teams head to extra innings. This game will come to an abrupt end in the bottom of the 11th inning when Mark Grace will come up against Bill Landrum and smack his second home run of the game, number six on the year for Grace, a solo shot as the Cubs win this game in dramatic fashion in 11 innings by a score of nine to eight. Chuck McElroy with the win in relief, his record now five and zero. Oh. Bill Landrum with the loss, his record drops to 1-1, one and one, as once again the Cubs win this one in 11 innings by a score of 9-8. Team waves proudly on this July 4th as the Texas Rangers host the Oakland Athletics. Rafael Palmero at the plate, no score, bottom one again starter for Oakland. Mike Moore with a runner on board, Palmero hits one deep to right field for a home run, a two-run shot, his 12th homer of the year. After one inning from Texas, it was 2 to nothing Rangers. And an Independence Day tradition in Texas, of course, is a dot race. So they're off, and they finish. I think the green one. Ricky Henderson standing in against Gerald Alexander. Texas with a 2 nothing lead in the seventh inning, but the bases all loaded. And Henderson with a first. His first ever career grand slam home run. Four RBIs, and his fifth homer on the year. Four two A's in the seventh. Gerald Alexander is fit to be tied. The fans aren't let down, though. They want Juan Gonzalez to come to the plate and homer off of Dennis Eckersley. Well, fat chance, but then again, there is a chance. With a man aboard and Eck up by two, he gives up a two-run home run. Gonzalez's 11th homer of the year ties up the score at four all in the eighth, when now in extra innings. Isn't that wonderful? What's wonderful is Kevin Reimer in the bottom of the 10th inning against Gene Nelson. Two away, nobody on, but this one is long, deep, two right field, out of here for a game-winning home run. Kevin Reimer, where there's a Reimer, there's a reason, and there's a game-winning hit. His fourth homer of the year and a 5-4 range of victory. Kevin Reimer watching his game-winning hit. Jeff Russell, the winner, 3-1. and one. Gene Nelson, the loser, he's 1-3. Thursday night, the Angels play host to the Kansas City Royals. In the top of the first inning, the Royals would take a 2-0 lead. 
with Brian McRae on third base, Danny Tartable, who has just been selected to the outfield in the American League All-Star team. He lines a shot into right field. Dave Winfield comes up with it, but McRae tags from third, and he's safe, and it's 2-0 Royals. The Angels would score one run in the bottom of the fourth on a passed ball, but then the Royals had a big fourth inning. First off, it was Kurt Stillwell with an RBI double. RBI number 29 made it 5-1 Kansas City, scoring Kevin Seitzer. Then Terry Shumpert would come to the plate for the Royals with two outs, still in the top of the fourth inning. And he'd get his 19th RBI of the season with this single into center field. This scores Kurt Stillwell from second base, and it's 6-1. Kansas City has the lead. Still top of the fourth, two outs. Gary Thurman with this bloop into right field. Dave Winfield and Hill get mixed up. Winfield can't find the ball. This allows Terry Shumpert to score all the way from first base. And it's 7-1 Kansas City. Brian McRae would continue the onslaught and make it 8-1 Kansas City with this hard double down the line. This scores Gary Thurman. And the Kansas City Royals led 8-1 after four innings of play. The Angels would finally get something going, but it was a little too little, a little too late, as they scored a couple of runs in the bottom of the eighth. Here, Dave Gallagher with a ground rule double scores Luis Polonia to make it 11-4. Then Wally Joyner, who was left off the All-Star team, drives a single into right field, scoring Dave Gallagher. That makes it 11-5. The Royals humiliated the Angels 12-5. Kevin Appier improved to 5-7. Kurt McCaskill dropped to 7 and 10. From the Seattle Kingdom on Thursday evening, the Seattle Mariners hosting the Chicago White Sox. This 3.30 p.m. start, Pacific Coast time, gets off with, in the bottom of the first inning, Jay Buhner with an RBI single scoring Edgar Martinez. That coming off of Chicago starter Greg Hibbard. But Carlton Fisk, the all-star, comes through against Rick DeLucia in the top of the third inning. This is DeLucia delivering. Fisk bloops a single to short right center field, scoring Robin Ventura and Frank Thomas 2-1 Sox after two and a half innings. Bottom four, Greg Hibbert to Jay Buhner. Buhner has both RBIs on the evening because this is a solo home run and his 11th round trip of the year ties up the game at two all in the bottom of the fourth. On to the bottom of the sixth inning where the fans are getting rowdy. It's Jay Buhner time once again. He already has two RBIs and a homer on the night and now he's facing Greg Hibbert and this one would be his second home run of the night breaking a two all tie in the sixth inning. This one to right center field his second of the game, and his 12th on the year, a soul blast, 3-2, to two, Buner over the White Sox. Then the fans get into it even more. I think these kids are weans on baseball. Here's a girl who's weans on baseball, or either that or charo tapes. Later on in the contest, it's still a 3-2 to two lead for the Seattle Mariners. Rob Murphy facing Robin Ventura, tying run on second base, two away in the ninth, and Ventura hits a comebacker. The Sox fall to the Mariners 3 to 2. Rich Delucia 7 and 5, Greg Hibbard 6 and 7, Rob Murphy second save. San Diego Padres at home at Jack Murphy Stadium on Thursday evening to face the Los Angeles Dodgers. Darryl Strawberry fresh off the disabled list faces Greg Harris fresh off the disabled list. In the first inning no score, now there's a score. So a home run for Strawberry. First since coming off the DL 1-0 LA in the first. Bottom one, Mike Morgan pitching two. Fred McGriff, he goes the opposite way for double down the left field line. It plates two. Tony Fernandez and Tony Gwynn and the two Tonys and Fred put San Diego on top two to one after one. Top two and Alfredo Griffin ekes one through the right side of the infield. Cal Daniel scores from second base and it was 2-2 two -two after one and a half innings on the Alfredo Griffin RBI single. You know, everybody thinks Earl Hirsch is this goody two-shoes, but look at this. Unbeknownst to the fan, he tries to untie the fan's shoes. Some nice guy. Dodgers lead 3-2, to two, bottom five, when Tony Gwynn singles up the middle. Thomas Howard scores, and it's three all through five. Bottom seven, San Diego leads 4-3 to three when Fred McGriff singles. Tony Fernandez, who ran with the pitch, is trying to score from first base. But Darryl Strawberry, two. Eddie Murray, two. Gary Carter, and Fernandez is out. 
It's 4-3, Dodgers trailing in the eighth when Brett Butler delivers against Larry Anderson. RBI single, Gary Carter scores. That ties up the game at four in the eighth and extends Butler's hitting streak to 17 for the All-Star. A tie score for all. Brett Butler at the plate with the base loaded one away. Butler lines one, but Scott Kulbaugh takes it and doubles Mike Sharperson off of third base to end the inning. Bottom 10, it's 4-4. Four, four.